Welcome back to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and we're getting very close to spooky season. So with this build, I figured I could kill two birds with one stone. I've been on kind of a one-piece kick recently, and so I really wanted to make a skull mask of Brook from the series. Now, if you don't know who this is, he has a very tragic backstory, but a very cool character indeed. The thing I also love about this build, though, is that with Halloween right around the corner, you can definitely use this for multiple different types of costumes and or decoration around the house. Now this mask is of course made all out of my HD foam which you can find over at Blick Art Materials and there are free PDF files available for this mask over on my website that you can download in case you would like to make your own. So I want to show you what it takes to put Brooks skull mask together. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with part A by tracing and cutting this out of some six millimeter foam. Now I want a slight curve to the mask, so I'm going to use my heat gun to help seal and manipulate the foam. Weldwood contact cement is going to be used in the darts at the top of the mask. After the adhesive is dried, the foam can be firmly pressed together and then use a rotary tool and a sanding sponge to help alleviate these seams. If you have some slight gaps, quick seal is a great way to fill those and can be thinned down with water. Part B is going to make up the jaw and this can also be traced and cut out of some 6mm foam. Heat is once again used to help manipulate the foam and then the tops of part B can be glued to the back side of part A. The teeth are going to be made up of part C, which is going to be traced and cut out of some 4mm foam. Rather than keeping them all together, I decided to cut them all apart. That way I could sand each individual tooth and then glue them together side by side. In the end, I thought this gave a better definition to the individual teeth. The middle of the mask can now be marked and then I can super glue the teeth to the front of part A. Notice that while I'm gluing the teeth to the top and bottom of the jaw, I'm also curving the foam. These multiple layers will help it retain the shape. Another way to help this out is by gluing a small strip of 2mm foam to the back side of part A. With the majority of the mask assembled, I can now cut out the nose and the eyes with a well-sharpened hobby blade. For the eyes, I cut them close, but then I clean them up with a rotary tool. To clean up the nose, I decided to use a paddle on my heat tool. This really helps for hard to reach areas. Now, as you can see, there are fumes when burning foam, so make sure to wear your respirator. I felt that his jaw was a little too low, and that's the great thing about foam is that you can easily cut it to reposition parts. So on yours, feel free to move the jaw up or close the mouth completely. Using a detail tip on my heat tool, I can now scribe in a crack at the top of his skull. And with that, assembly is complete so we can start to prime and seal by using some Plasti Dip. After the Plasti Dip is cured, I'm going to spray on a dusting of Valspar White Flat. This is going to help prep the surface and get it ready for acrylics. Which the first color I'm going to lay down is Liquitex Heavy Body Parchment. This is applied to the surface with a mop brush and a minimal amount of water. This is gonna help me control how much paint is applied and give me a slight variation to the overall surface. Okay. 
To outline the parts on the skull, I'm going to be using some Liquitex Mars Black. Because the build is pretty simple, small painting steps like this really help all the individual pieces pop. And while I'm painting the surface, I am looking at reference images from the manga and the anime just to give it a little more personality. I'd like to go with a cell shaded look, so I'm going to use some Liquitex Neutral Gray as a mid-tone. This is applied to the mask using a detail brush, again referencing the manga and the anime. And it's crazy how just three colors of white, black, and gray really give this mask some depth and personality. To make this mask wearable, I'm going to be using some 1 inch elastic and tri-glides. The elastic is cut to approximately 12 inches in length and then one end is threaded through a tri-glide. With both pieces complete, they can each now be threaded through the opposite side. This is going to make the elastic adjustable for multiple head sizes. To attach the elastic to the mask, I start by first scribing the surface with a hobby knife. This will give the hot glue something to grip onto so it won't pull away. The same process can now be applied to the opposite side. To make the mask more comfortable to wear, some high density upholstery foam is hot glued to the back side. Small sections are also hot glued over the elastic in the corners. And with that, our mask is ready for Halloween. So if you were going to use this as a mask, a couple of things you can do. You could use a full face mask. These are pretty inexpensive and you can get them off of Amazon. You could also use a balaclava where the eyes are open and just cover the eyes and the nose with some black chiffon fabric. This is one of my favorites and it's something that I do on a lot of my masks. Also with this build, feel free to customize it and really make it your own. So with a project like this, you could obviously make the mouth a lot shorter, make the eyes a lot meaner. Without the wig, you could tell that as a skeleton mask, mask on its own it looks really cool it has a very distinct style to it and you could easily customize this to make it your own so even if you weren't going to use it as a mask you could definitely have this as decorations around your door or in your windows for the Halloween season So you all can see the steps that I took to put together my own custom skull mask of Brooke from One Piece. And again, you can utilize this for all different types of masks and or decorations for the Halloween season as well. And if you are building any of my builds or utilizing HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.